Hi, uh, Ben here. And one of the big differences between the uh, Mark IV and the Mark V Hailstorm is going to be that the Mark V is going to be built and run off of a, of a LiPo. Now, the Hailstorms are all set up to run on around 16 volts based on the motor choices and how the, how the flywheels and everything spin. So, that means that I'm going from four IMR cells to a 4S LiPo. And I, want to, I need to get that 4S LiPo into the blaster. The problem, the real issue um, with that is 4S LiPos tend to be quite a bit fatter than a 2 or even a 3S LiPo. So you've got to find a place to get that into the blaster where you have a lot more depth. Now one of the options that can be considered in, with this build is putting it up front where the battery tray normally goes. And there's probably enough space if you've got a nice short fat 4S LiPo you could kind of squeeze it in here. I didn't want to go that route because it makes the blaster even more front heavy. And I, I don't like front heavy blasters. I like things that balance fairly well on the handle. And if putting putting the lipo up here and all that weight here, with addition with the mode, all the motors and everything, and your magazine, all of that well up front of the handle, that's going to really put a, a front floor. It basically locks you into ha all, even using two hands on the blaster. So I really, really, really didn't want to use this space here for the lipo. So what I've done instead is I've taken the Strife battery tray, which you know, is from the other um, Hailstorm builds, the same kind of mounting here on the side from the, the 3 and the 4, uh, Mark 3 and the Mark 4. But I've taken and I've hollowed out uh, the battery cage to go down into here. And so this is going to fit a nice um, 4S uh, LiPo. And it's going to fit in there kind of like so. This is the LiPo that I've uh, designed uh, for. It's 4S. It's uh, 1,000 milliamp hours. Uh, I believe it's a 45C. I'll have to go back and look at it. See, but that LiPo is going to fit down, and you can kind of see, I'll bring this up closer. You can see how that LiPo fits right into that groove, and then the, your wiring is going to come in like that and sit here. And so that goes down in there. So if you look at this from the back side, what I've done is I've taken uh, the normal wiring cover that comes across here and I've taken and it's hard to see both sides but I've taken I've, I've took the top of that, that that covers it down off and so it just makes the flat piece and glued that in and then I took a piece of um, let me find it over here and I don't have it right in front of me but I took a piece of the old battery tray, cut it out from here, 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 and use that as the rest of the plate. Glued that all in, locked it on the sides, top, down in here, and that forms a real solid, uh, nice area backing for that for that uh, for that battery tray. Left this space up in here for the wiring, and again, as you can see, when the lipo um, fits in here, it fits in here very well. And then on the back side of that you can see that you've got, it's using that space that you've, that extra space that you've got in here. The, the magazine slides freely across that. You can look at it from down from this angle and you can kind of see that um, you've got, uh, I'm not getting good focus, but you've got a little bit of space here for that, that magazine to fit. It doesn't actually hit and it clears nicely. So it's, a, it's kind of an efficient use of that space uh, to put the lipo in. So anyways, this gets me out of having to have uh, the battery up front, but also allows uh, something much fatter like the 4S LiPo that I, that I need to go down in here. So anyways, this is kind of a look at how the battery tray is going to come together. Thanks for watching.